Um, okay, the title of the sermon is Demon Possessed. Demon Possessed. It is something we should know as Christians. Uh, many pastors, preachers, I see, they deny this subject, but it is a very important subject because it exists. And the Bible talks about it, so we should know about it. Um, you can go already to Luke 8.27. By the way, this story is two times in the Bible. It's in Luke and in Mark. And um, they almost are the same, but some details are in the one and not in the other. But I like the ending of the one of Luke, so we're going to read from Luke 8.27. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Jesus Christ, in your name we are gathered. Thank you, Lord, that we can preach this word. Thank you that we know everything and the enemy has nothing to hide. We know everything and we should be prepared for uh, eventual attacks. Thank you, Lord. Bless this church, this pastor, this congregation. Amen. Okay. So, Luke 8.27. <clears throat> Let's read. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded uh, the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the men and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw that what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also, which saw it, told them, by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into a ship, into the ship, and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and look at this sentence, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. So he had to go back to house to show how great things God did. Let's continue. And he went his way and published throughout the city, what did he say, how great things Jesus had done unto them. This is already a proof that God is Jesus, Jesus is God. We see it very clearly. Jehovah's Witnesses don't like this verse. Show them if they come at your doorstep, by the way. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. So this is a beautiful uh, story, of course, in the sense that the man was healed. But why is this story even two times in the Bible, in Luke and in Mark? Because God tells us this is happening. Don't you ever wonder... Some people in the city or some people on the street, they, they talk to themselves and they are acting crazy and they do all kinds of things. Why? Why are those people like that? Well, the Bible tells us some people are demon-possessed. They are normal men and women like us, but something along the road happened to them that they got possessed. <clears throat> and they can be healed by the right person, Jesus. So how to recognize demon possession? This is what I want to talk about, how to recognize it. Because... We should recognize it as Christians. If there's somebody acting weird, we, could, we, we should know if, if this guy or woman is just weird or maybe this person is possessed. So what are the things? One of the things we see from the story, of course we read from the Bible, is superhuman strength. You see the strength of this man was great. Because in 29 it says, For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. So those are the chains on your uh, feet and, and on your arms. So he was completely bound with chains. And what happened? And he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. He broke the chains. I mean, have you ever broke chains? I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a hard job. You cannot do this. If you are 
kept in the prison, especially in those days, those were heavy chains, heavy, heavy chains. You even had the big ball on the, on the feet, you know, and he just break it. So you see, superhuman strength is something you can recognize, uh, demon possession. By the way, um, it also says you are in chains. But I think there's another story of the Bible. If you have devils in you, and I believe many people have demons in them, not even knowing, because they can attach to you and, and do certain things, if you're not saved. I'm talking about unsaved people. And also the Bible tells you, if you have a problem like this, you are bound in chains. You're stuck. If you have an addiction, you're also bound in chains. An addiction <clears throat> is also something that is keeping you stuck. Or, or if you have something that you cannot go to Jesus, if you are stuck on Hinduism. I talk to a man in my neighborhood. Sometimes he comes by, he lives, I think, on the street, but he, I only allow him because he's, he's pretty decent. But I told him the gospel so many times, so many times, and he's this close, and he says, yeah, Jesus, I love Jesus. I said, but only Jesus. He said, I cannot let go of the other ones because my parents serve them and so on and so on. He has a, um, a, a piece of land where he sleeps on, and he has all these altars. He says, I have to feed those demons every day, otherwise they kill me. He's so afraid. He cannot lose those demons. I tell him, only Jesus. And he loves Jesus, but he keeps stuck on those, those Hindu gods. And it's a sad thing. But he, he keeps on coming to my house, so I keep on preaching. So in a while, it will break. But it, this, these are bands. These are chains um, he's stuck with. He's stuck with those. And in John 8.32, it says clearly how we can get out of this. John 8.32. And this verse is a very famous verse, I think. But people quote it differently. The, the other Bibles say it differently. Only the King James Bible says it this way. Normal people say, and you, should, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's what people say, right? Set you free. But the King James Bible says, shall make you free. And I always saw this difference, and I don't know why is this a difference. Why is it everybody is telling you, set you free, set you free, but the King James says, make you free. So I thought about it a long time. I think that setting something free is not completely free. Because if I walk with my dog, and in Holland you got those dogs, dog parks. When I had my dog on the chain, and there was this fenced park, I set my dog free. I unloosed his chain, and I could let him run. But was he really free? There was still a fence around it that kept him bound. And when I said, come here, I put him back on a chain. So I set him free, but he was not free. But the Bible says, make you free. If I, if I sh should say the same thing, I'm going to make my dog free, that means, hey, run on the street, go whatever, look for yourself a new owner. That is making free. So this is clearly, and you shall know the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. And Jesus will make you free. Because if you are saved, no demon can possess you anymore. Demon possession. That means something is possessing you. And, uh, but this was just a little sidetrack because you have to get out of those bands. But we see human, uh, superhuman strength. You see that some people are um, strong and you don't know why. There is this movie on YouTube, a little clip, and I can recommend you to watch this. Uh, it's about two twins, two blonde twins from Sweden, but they are in the, in the United Kingdom. If you just type in twins, demon possessed, UK, then you find it right away. And those people of the police force were interviewed about this, this accident. So there were two twins that were out of their mind, crazy, totally crazy. And they want to kill themselves. They, they went on the highway, and you know how fast they go, and, and they want to kill themselves. So the police force were coming, and they kept them. And one of them ran away, but one of those twins, one of those girls, skinny girls, ch small girls, was kept by six grown men. Six men kept, kept this girl, and still she was kicking them all away. She was strong, and you, you, I mean, if six men would grab me, I cannot move, you know? But this girl was just kicking. And with the interview with the police officers, they were all amazed. They were like, how is this possible? Then she got loose, she ran on the street, and a car hit her, bam! And she stood up, she was all bloody, she stood up like nothing happened. I mean, this is, this is demon possession. But the world doesn't re recognize demon possession. The world says, ah, they're mentally ill, or something happened, and they want to explain it away. The Bible says demon possessed. This is what's going to happen. Uh, also, there's now a new drug. Well, I don't know if it's new, but people recognize this drug called Flaca. Just type in YouTube, Flaca. 
and you will see people are opening their mind to every demon possible. Those people run naked through the street. Remember, naked through the street. They jump into a front windshield of a car, and the car completely breaks, and they have nothing. They, they run on the street. They just bite pieces of skin from other people. They bite something out of the arm, like cannibalism. This is demon possession. Flaka also called bad salts. Just type it in. If you, and don't watch this with children. This is very, very sick. But we should know about this. This is happening, and it's going to happen more. It's getting worse and worse. Um, what is another thing to recognize demon possession? That we just talked about the nakedness. We see the same. In the story what we just read from 27, it says, And when he fo uh, went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes. He had no clothes on. Why? Well, this is something how you can recognize demon possession. Don't you see if you go to the city, or if you see somebody on the street, they're all almost always naked. You know, many times I see in the city people running out naked. I think, why? Put something on, you know. You get clothes from people, put something on. But this is how you can recognize demon possession. This is one of the things. That's why the, the Bible tells us these things. Why would God put this little detail in for us to know? It's important to know. We need to recognize it. Um, I also think that because they have no shame. They are unclean spirits. They are unclean. So they get in you and they have no shame. And that's the same with Adam and Eve. When they were uh, harmless, sinless, when they were still perfect, they had no clothes. And that was okay because they had nothing to be ashamed for. But when they ate of the fruit, then they recognized, hey, I'm naked. So this, this is something about shame. And when you're demon-possessed, this is what, what you do, one of the things. Um, also we see no rest, and he was in the wilderness. So this person had no rest. I know that one uh, man in my street, I got a lot of junkies in my street, so I have a lot of stories. Um, one man is walking every day past my house, every day, left and right, left and right. Not specifically my house, but this street. Every day. I've seen this for months now, for a year almost. I live there a year now. And I'm, I'm thinking, what is he doing? What is he doing? I was thinking maybe he's, you know, giving some groceries to somebody, but he's talking to himself also. Sometimes he's screaming. Angry, you know, but when he sees me, hey, how you doing? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And he starts screaming again. What's going on? I try to talk about Jesus, but it, it, it doesn't come anymore. But one time I was going the same way as he went, and I was walking behind him. I was not following him, I was walking behind him. And suddenly he stopped, turned around, and just walked back. So there was no mission. This person is literally walking, stopping, and going back all day. I mean, do you think that is pleasant? What does the Bible say? No rest. They have no rest. All day walking around. It, it's, it's really sad to see, you know. And we see these things. This is demon possessed. Why do you scream to somebody? Why are you talking to somebody? They're not crazy. They, they are actually talking to somebody. But it's, it's not a good thing. And um, we see it was driven into the wilderness, right? That's the same as the Israelites were also 40 years in the wilderness because that's, that, that's just wandering. Just wandering. You have no mission at all. Let's check Matthew 12, 43. This is so important to understand. Matthew 12, 43. We need to understand this because when we understand this, we can help people. This is the whole reason. By the way, one of the biggest reasons for this sermon, I run in too many Christians that are still afraid of demons. They are so afraid of ghosts and demons and pastor sometimes talks about it. They hear something in the house and they get so afraid. Why are you afraid? You know, being afraid for a demon as a safe person is the same for a big guy afraid of a little mouse. I, I'm telling you, it's the same comparison, maybe even, even worse. Matthew 12, 43 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, dry places. Remember this, dry places like the wilderness, right? He's just walking, walking, seeking rest and finding none. You see this? Same you see the same thing, right? Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth he and take it with himself seven other spirits. And that's the same what Jesus does ask, what is your name? Legion, because many devils were in him. Legion just means an army, like many. Uh, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So it becomes worse with that person. 
Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So it is swept and garnished. What, what is this thing? What people are stuck in. When people worship demons or false idols, they, demons enter into them. And then they, they see that their life is going worse. What do people do? Do they go to Jesus? They, no, they go to a bonu man or to a witch doctor or they go to somebody who can help them, right? And I heard many stories on the street. They pay two, three, four to 10,000 US for this person to get the demons out. What do we see? He finds it empty, swept and garnished. This is what the witch doctor can do. He can do that. He can make it clear. He can get every demon out of there, but he doesn't replace it with Jesus. That's the problem. He keeps it empty. So the people that pay the money think, hey, it works. This guy is really, he is the real deal. Because I paid him and it works. I feel better. Yes, but what do we see from the Bible? This demon will come back with seven other spirits. And the last state is worse than the first. So they go back to the witch doctor because they think they helped him. Pay a lot of money and then they feel good for a little while. And then maybe 14, 32, 64, you know, it multiplies till you have a legion in, in yourself. You have to replace it with something. If the house is empty and garnished, replace it. Next to me, uh, my neighbors, they moved. Two months ago, they moved. When they were moved, one month later, junkies were living there because it was empty, swept, and garnished. You see the same thing. It was empty and everybody in the neighborhood knew those people moved away. Next to me, and I was like, well, how is that door open? How is that window open? I saw all kinds of activity in that house. And I'm not af afraid of ghosts. I don't think, hey, it's haunted. No, junkies were there. And then you see they were using the clothes left over because it was empty. What if this owner put new people in there? They would not come because they had new owners. And this is the same what the Bible tells us. If this witch doctor clears everything out, replace it with Jesus right away. So if you come to a situation that you have to uh, get a demon out of somebody, make sure you give them the gospel afterwards and tell them about Jesus and tell that they have to, have to accept Jesus and let the Holy Spirit live in them. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't share this body with any demon. It's not like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit this place and some demon can sit this place. No, the Holy Spirit says it is mine. You are bought with a price. Nobody comes in this house. So th this is very important. And that's why the Bible tells us about this. By the way, we see, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. W what is also? Meaning, the last state will be worse than the first. Meaning, it get, it's getting worse. And then we see this in the world also. It is getting worse. Some politics try to clean up everything. Some politics try to clean up the country. And it works for a little while. Right? They come and they empty, swept and garnish the country for a little while. But then, corruption comes in. And, and the, this country will get worse and worse and worse. And it happens worldwide, not only Suriname. This is happening everywhere. Because I remember when I was younger, older people always told me, they say, back in my day, it was better. You know, back in my age, the youth has still respect, it was better. Well, I reached the age of 36, so there is a generation before me. I can say now my generation was better than this generation. So what if all those older people were telling the truth? What if it is actually true that it is getting worse and worse? And it is. The Bible says in Luke 17, 29. It is getting worse, so uh, prepare yourself. <laughs> and it has to be, because the Bible says so. Everything will come up to the open. New drugs will be invented. New crazy things you will see. <clears throat> Luke 17, 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom... It rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroy them all. Look at this at 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Sodom and Gomorrah was a terrible place. I mean, men could not even walk safely on the street. Can you imagine? Well, we're getting there. I am convinced that we are getting to the point that we as men cannot walk safely at nighttime. It will happen. It says here, when, son of, when Jesus will come back, it will be the same as Sodom and Gomorrah, and even worse. So, <laughs> men, arm yourself, go to the, to the gym, you know, make sure that you have a fighting chance, or make sure you're at the house and, and block the house. We, we saw it from, from the, the story two times. And, um, but also, in, in the positive light, the light, of in the positive light, yeah, the light is getting brighter. You know, when the world is getting more dark, the light is brighter. Look at this church. If I light a match right now, 
it has no effect. If I light a match, it has no effect because look at how many light there is. It's, it's daytime. But when we meet at 8 o'clock this evening and we close all the windows up and it's completely dark and I light the same match, the whole church is lit up, but there's one match. That's meaning the more dark this world's going to be, the more light we can shine. And that's what the Bible says. We are the lights of the world. So when it becomes more wicked, you will, will get more power to spread the gospel and people will listen because people will notice. I mean, when bad things happen, people search for an answer. And you are the one who can give them the answer. You can say Jesus is the answer. And I was searching for this many years. And this, this is uh, what I found. What, what else do we see with demon possession? How to recognize? We see he's unclean, of course, an unclean sp uh, spirit. What does that mean? Well, nakedness, screaming, cursing, shouting, spitting. I saw all kinds of things. When you fight with, with some junk in the street, they spit at you. You know, it's an unclean spirit. Everything disgusting. And what else do we see? Cutting himself. This is, this is very important to understand. Cutting himself. In Mark 5.5, 5, this is the other story. You can go to Mark 5.5. 5. The cutting himself, we see this many, many times in real life. <clears throat> but uh, psychologists don't recognize this. Mark 5.5, 5, the same story, but just in Mark. <clears throat> it says here, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains. This is talking about the demon-possessed man. And in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Why was he doing this? Why was he cutting himself? Because that is what the demons demand. They want the self-mutilation. And the, the psychologists, I, I went to some doctor psychology websites, and they call it self-destructive behavior. Sounds nice, right? Nice, right? Self-destructive behavior. They want to put everything in nice words, then it sounds more intelligent, right? So they say, this is from the website, some experts consider an impulse control disorder. That, that, that sounds like classy, right? Now you can say, yeah, I cut myself, but I have a, a control impulse disorder. So it, it feels like you're doing something great, right? And it's repetitive self-mutilation in which people intentionally harm themselves by cutting, burning, or scratching their bodies. So we see the cutting part. And psychologists say, no, it's just an, an uh, I have to read it, impulse control disorder. Well, did Jesus say that? When he saw the man in the mountains, hey man, come to me. You have a control, this pulse uh, order. Come to me, let's, let's fix you some medicine. No, what did Jesus do? He commanded the devil to get out. He was not talking about, hey, let's go to some therapy sessions. He said, get out. I command you, you have to go out. What should we do? Should we talk with the persons? No, we should command. If we are sure that something is possessing this, this, this man or woman, we should demand and command this uh, demon out to get out of there. And also, um, psychologists say, cutting helps them to control their emotional pain. Well, I, I saw this in school when I was 12, 13 years old. I was in high school, and I was in a little bit of a different class. But um, there were people in my classroom that were cutting themselves, and one girl specifically. Very nice girl, but she was a little bit crazy. And in the lunch break, when we were eating bread, she was actually cutting herself with this little razor, right? And then she had a new boyfriend, and she carved the name of this new boyfriend in her arm. And, she said, and, she just, and I was just like eating and watching this. For me, it was dinner and entertainment, you know? But now I know something was wrong with this girl. So she was scratching, and then she said, you have to scratch off every time, and then it heals like a scar. And then this name is forever there. But next week, she had a new boyfriend. So she had to start over again, scratching, scratching. And, and two years later, I, I, I saw her again, long sleeves, of course, because she didn't stop there. Her whole arms were messed up. If you look at YouTube, like this, this, this order, people actually cut themselves hundreds of times. Their whole arm is, is cut. Why are they doing this? Well, psychologists say, yeah, it's just in this order. What does the Bible say? Demon possession. You know, the world gives all kinds of names. Yeah, this and that and... Like, like this, this is also from a website. Self-injury can also be a symptom for psychiatric problems. Look at these words. Borderline personality disorder, anxiety disorder, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia. We heard about schizophrenia, right? Multiple uh, people living in you. Those are demons. But psychologists don't believe this. They say, no, this person has a bad youth, and, and, and 
they, they recognize in these different types. It's a demon possession. There's only one word, the simplicity that is in Christ. God says, demon possession. Don't make every word up. The same as, uh, you now you've got, you got homosexual, lesbian, bisexual, trans, pan, gender. Look, the Bible has one word, sodomite. You should not be afraid of this word. Every word is pure, the Bible says. So it's simple what the Bible says. One word, and in this case, demon possessed. I had an experience with borderline, not myself, but I knew somebody. Um, had a borderline disorder, well, the doctor said. And this person was with, in a relationship, and uh, th this person is just uh, destroying everything that is good. That was a mission. So when the relationship was good, she had to destroy it. You know, you can fight over a hamburger. I'm not even kidding. You know, they have to fight. Everything what is built up has to be destroyed. And this is what demons do. They don't want you to prosper. If the demon gives you money, it, it's because the demon knows you will destroy yourself with that money. Simple like that. He can give you the, the exact right tools to destroy your life. Because that's the mission. I mean, many, the end game of a demon is suicide. That's the end game. When the demon is finished, suicide. And then he co goes to another person. That, that's the whole, whole plan. Uh, many people have demons. And you might ask, how many demons are there in the world? It's an important question. How many? I think the Bible has an answer. Revelation 12, 3. Because there are a lot, says the, says the Bible. But how many? We know that Lucifer fell from heaven, right? But he took people with him. Of people, angels with him. And those angels, they call fallen angels. If you type that in in Google, you see so many stuff. Fallen angels. Those are demons. <clears throat> Revelation 12, 3. It says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, that's the devil of course, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We see that this, that this dragon has a tail, and he swept, it says, a third part of the stars of heaven. I think this means the fallen angels because the devil persuaded many angels to fight with him. He rebelled against God and he said, come, fight with me. Same, same right now, right? <clears throat> Political parties right now, they're rallying up, they're giving food packages, they give flags, they give everything to get behind their cause. And that's what the devil did. And he said, come with me, I will rebel against God. They fell with him because the, it says, in, uh, you don't have to go there, in Matthew 25 it says, um, Hell, this uh, everlasting fire, was prepared for the devil and his angels. His angels. So he was not alone. So how many? I think a third part. And that's, that's always, I, I always say the number 33 is so much, so close with the, the, the secret societies. They worship this number because they think a third part fell from heaven. So they, they give glory to the third part. That's why 33 is the highest rank in Freemasonry. And that's why Jesus died 33. They celebrate this number. But uh, we see that there is a chain of commandment. Even when there are spirits in one person, they fight among each other. Look at YouTube, the testimonies of people that found Jesus and were cleared of those demons. They tell you when they were possessed with those demons, they fought amongst each other. Who is in charge? They were fighting who is going to be the leader of those legion or this group inside your, your body. Can you imagine? And we see this in Ephesians 6.12. You can go there, one of the last verses. Ephesians 6.12 Important to know, don't be afraid and we know that it is true. Ephesians 6.12 Very famous one. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. What did we see from the story? He was in the mountains, right? And if you look, the, the demon possessed man, I mean. He was in the mountains. And we see that the high places in the Old Testament, there where the idols worshipped, in high places. But if I say right now, if I, if I start bragging, hey, I have friends in high places. If I start bragging, does that mean that I have friends in mountains? Do, do you search in mountains for my friends? No, that means I have friends in politics. I have friends in government, right? I have friends in high places. That means the demons know exactly where to gather. In this case, spiritual weakness is in high places, is in politics, presidents, uh, politicians, you know, everything high <clears throat> in, in this world. We see in um, 
Also in Matthew, by the way, the devil took Jesus to a high mountain to show him all the riches. So this is something we can recognize. I don't know why, but I think he has an overview or something. And the military hierarchy, because that's what it is, the military has this from the demons. They have generals, they have uh, uh, soldiers, they have foot soldiers. They have little demons, they go into the junkies on the street, but they get big demons and they go to presidents and so on. So there is a difference between demons. And uh, we see this in, in the Old Testament because how many names were uh, mentioned in the, in the Old Testament? We have Baal, Ashtoreth, Queen of Heaven, Moloch, Dagon, Beelzebub. We know those names. Why do we know those names? Because those were the high devils. Those were the generals of the devils and they were worshipped. But there were many more and still in this world there are many more. So if you come to somebody and you see something is wrong and God puts, the, puts this in your path, are you going to be afraid? Are you going to be afraid? Or are you going to stand up? What if something happens in your house? Are you going to stand up or are you going to run to the corner and start crying and call pastor? Pastor, come to my house. You have to help me. <laughs> it can happen. One time I was working. It was night time. And uh, I was working for the guy. He has all these Hindu things, you know. And he had like on his wall, he had like a necklace. But it all, had all kinds of things in it. And like a bullet. And it, I knew it was wrong. But look, it is not my office, so I cannot say remove it, you know. One time at night time, I actually was reading my Bible, not on loud, in myself. This thing suddenly, boom, blew, blew off the wall. Like all this, uh, how you say, they, these grains, they fell all over the wall. You have, don't have to be afraid of this, just fight against this. So this was my sermon, thank you for listening, amen. <laughs>